Mom, I can't go on like this anymore, my once happy daughter Elena said in a startling SOS call. Elena, come back home, concerned, I let out an involuntary cry, I'm hardly allowed to eat by Ethan and his mom. I'm Jonna, a 50-year-old homemaker, and James is a 52-year-old employee of the corporation. Elena, our daughter, turns 26 today. She began living alone after receiving a job offer from a large firm after graduating from college after Elena moved out, James and I were enjoying our newfound freedom together, Elena was cautious in relationships and bashful with men despite her professional success, James and I were ecstatic when Sarah announced that she had a boyfriend, Ethan and James was quite insistent that Elena introduce us to Ethan, asking excitedly, what's he like? take him home at a later time, James heard me warn him, honey, don't push her, when she's ready, she will present him to you. Let us wait with patience, Elena merely grinned, Elena promised to bring Ethan over. Shortly dad, you kept insisting, so I complained to Ethan, she jokingly said to James, he consented to visit you, so please don't say anything strange to Ethan, James was clearly happy to see Ethan when he arrived to welcome us, even so, Ethan's amiable banter quickly calmed us down, hello, I'm Ethan Smith, and I'm seriously dating Elena with the intention of marrying her, he said when he introduced himself to James and me, marrying, Elena remarked, blushing, you're embarrassing me, Ethan, you mentioned that it was only a friendly hello, Elena was informed by James with joy and no, it's great that he's thinking about the future, with our approval, their relationship developed smoothly, and five months later, Ethan made a formal proposal, James and I were both thrilled to see a blushing but content Elena, I'd heard that Ethan was employed by a big bank system provider, as wedding preparations got underway. James and I talked about how their future appeared assured, Elena asked for advice a lot, she asked me, hey mom, what's the going rate for a wedding ring, one day, Ethan intends to spend roughly $10,000 on one, wedding rings, maybe about $2,500 each for the couple, I said, surprised, engagement rings are said to cost approximately $3,500, Elena gave off a nervous vibe, right, I had the same impression, she replied, I thought Ethan had a strange understanding of money after researching it and perusing periodicals, when Elena stated Ethan insists it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing and wants me to have something nice, though, I could see where she was coming from, I took it to mean that Ethan wanted to give her something unique, the two eventually relocated from their bachelor pad to a condominium in New York, which was both pricey and close to the city for their commute, hey, Elena, the area you and Ethan live in must be pretty expensive to rent, I asked her, feeling concerned, can you afford the payments each month? She comforted me, saying, mom, don't worry, in addition to working hard, Ethan receives a respectable pay, he has to live close to the bank for work, at a bank-rated systems company, Ethan works as a systems engineer, even in the middle of the night, Ethan must go to the scene right away if there is an issue, for this reason, the location has to be close to the bank, just a quick cab right away, Elena clarified that we're okay because Ethan's employer pays a sizable housing allowance. I simply accepted the company's current state of affairs without fully comprehending it. After a few months, I asked Elena to lunch before she got married. After her marriage, she frequently declined our lunch dates, citing other commitments or employment. James said that Elena might just be preoccupied with her married life, but it didn't appear like she was trying to avoid me, Elena stated over the phone next Saturday. Oh, that's when Ethan is traveling for work. Yes, mom. I am able to make it. I'll locate a location for us. After six months, I was overjoyed to finally have lunch with my kid. Elena appeared a little pale when I first saw her. I questioned Elena, worried. What's wrong? Take it easy if you're not feeling well. Please just remain at home and relax. Elena assured me that she was okay. Just worn out after working overtime lately, moreover, having lunch with you could be just what I need to relax, she forced a meek smile, and the two of us had a nice conversation. Twice after two hours, Elena's cell phone called, her expression upon seeing 
The display was stunned, Mom, I have to go home already, Elena said to me, it's Ethan's mom calling, Ivy was at their apartment, she explained, I apologized for bothering you during such a busy time, surprised as I was, Elena said, it's okay, you can hurry back, and hurried out of there, a further six months passed, and in that time Elena experienced a horrific event, she informed me about it over the phone, while James and I were enjoying our day off. It was a depressing day, suddenly, when I was pouring her tea, my phone rang, Elena was visible on the screen, after I replied promptly, Elena cautiously said, Mom, it's me, um, hi, it seemed she could go no farther, I questioned, sensing something wasn't right, what's the problem, has anything occurred, Elena said nothing for a long time, I waited for her to speak, patiently, she eventually remarked, Mom, I can't go on living this way, I'm barely allowed to eat by Ethan and his parents, if this keeps going, I might not make it, startled, I inquired, are you alright, it sounds like a dire situation, why do you not return home, Elena didn't seem to know, Ellie, if you're feeling sick, you can just sit around, I informed her sternly, return home, when you arrive, we'll discuss it further, Elena said back, really, please allow me to return, but I have no money at all, I am unable to depart, this struck me as odd, even though Elena was making a respectable salary, there wasn't time for a lengthy conversation, her predicament seemed dire, first, I need to meet with Elena to see how she is doing, I advised her, leave the house with only your valuables in tow, I take it that there's a convenience shop close to your apartment, I'll take the car there and come get you, there, wait for me, Elena consented, crying James and I ran to the convenience store as a result, Elena was crouching in the parking lot when we got there, she said, mom, mom, I'm sorry, when she saw me, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done this, she sobbed, I gave Elena a hug, and James and I assisted her in getting into the car, she had an extremely slender build and a nearly grey complexion, what could have happened to her, I was shocked, after Elena stopped crying, I hugged her, she won't be able to come down here, James told me, let's get her home as quickly as possible so she can rest, we must speak with Ethan, I concurred with James, yes, right now letting Elena rest is our top priority. I think she was tired when we got home since Elena fell asleep on the couch right away. I gave her some simple meals to eat when she awoke. She gorged herself in front of us. She had to be really ravenous. Her stories of not being able to eat and not having any money shocked me. What do you mean you're not allowed to eat? I questioned Elena. Elena clarified, saying Ethan and his mother Ivy always pressuring me to save more because my pay is less than theirs. My eating portions gradually decreased, really. I inquired, are you the one cooking, considering you two are? married and likely eat the same meals, James asked, shocked to learn that Ivy had been doing the kitchen work for the last six months, that is, excluding Elena completely Elena, is Ivy practically living here now, James questioned, astonished to learn of Ivy's prolonged visit after a fight with her husband, Ivy moved in around six months ago, but Elena revealed that she had only planned to remain for a week at first. But their son Ethan stepped in and demanded that Ivy stay for good Elena. Bemoaned, since then, Ivy has taken over our finances and criticized my budgeting skills. Exposing Ivy's expanding dominance over domestic affairs, frustrated by Ivy's meddling in her day-to-day -day affairs, Elena continued, she even keeps track of my expenses down to my cafeteria deductions, Elena felt outnumbered and ignored because Ivy and Ethan consistently took sides against her, despite her attempts to speak up for herself, feeling more alone in her own house, Elena confided, every time I try to discuss anything, it's like walking into a battlefield, are Ethan and Ivy really controlling all of your finances, concerned to learn that Elena was being financially repressed, 
James inquired, appalled by Ivy's micromanagement of Elena's spending, James screamed, Elena can't even make basic purchases without Ivy's approval and it appears that Ethan spends carelessly while Elena finds it difficult to pay for necessities, he continued, shaking his head at how unfair the circumstances were. Elena's voice faltered as she described how Ivy ignored Ethan's extravagant spending habits while criticizing every expense she incurred, including trips to the salon and beauty purchases Ivy objected even when Elena needed new clothes, James said. Shocked by Ivy's hypocrisy, Elena cried Ethan's extravagance knows no bounds, remembering that he had recently bought a pricey watch to maintain his professional image, feeling the weight of her tyranny due to her finances, she continued. It's like they're living in different worlds, tension rose in the room when Elena's phone rang. When James returned the call, Ivy was asking why Elena wasn't picking up, unfortunately, James had to say that Elena isn't well enough to talk right now, he said, trying not to lose his cool in the face of Ivy's bothersome questions, James recalled, getting more and more irritated with Ivy's boldness, Ivy insisted on Elena's prompt return, criticizing her for being coddled and unable to manage her responsibilities. James was at a loss for words, and so he said nothing when Ivy proceeded to control. Elena's life virtually, making her feel defenseless and exposed, James firmly stated, once Elena recovers, we'll discuss her return to work, defying Ivy's requests, James was uneasy as the call came to a conclusion because he realized how much power Ivy had over Elena's life, it's time we all got together and talked about our living arrangements, even Ethan, James declared, resolutely tackling the matter at hand. Our determination to protect Elena and make sure she's okay was further strengthened. By Ivy's callous response, James and I discussed our next course of action while Elena slept. Elena was examined by a doctor the next day, which confirmed our suspicions that stress and malnourishment were the cause of her deteriorating health. We reluctantly came to the conclusion that she needed to take time off work in order to concentrate on her recuperation. After learning about Elena's poor diet while living with Ivy and Ethan, I was glad to see her enjoy the supper I had cooked for her. During a quiet moment, I felt a wave of rage at Ivy's brutality and neglect when Elena revealed that she had been living on bread ends for months. Elena ought to have been eating right, James said, clearly concerned. We decided to find out more and confront Ivy and Ethan about how they had treated Elena. When we investigated Elena's situation further, we found concerning evidence of manipulation and overwork. Our concerns were validated by her supervisor and co-workers, who expressed worry for her. Welfare and her commitment to her work in spite of her deteriorating health, fortunately, Elena's employer paid her sick leave, which offered some respite amidst the chaos. While appreciative of the assistance, we were aware that much work needed to be done to guarantee Elena's safety and independence. James and I made a firm decision to support Elena and go up against Ivy and Ethan. Refusing to allow them to take advantage of and treat her badly, we decided to move the sick pay to an account that is different from Elena's primary income account, Ethan called two weeks after Elena got back home, he insisted that Elena ought to be well enough by now and pushed for her to come back right away, upon answering the phone, James politely asked Ethan to be aware that Elena's recuperation was still in progress, before hanging up, Ethan grudgingly consented to another week of recuperation, admitting there was no other option, I complained to James that I was worried and that Elena should be given at least three more weeks to recover, James comforted me, pointing out that they had mistreated Elena and that we had a plan in place to be ready, then he turned to face Elena, giving her the option to pursue a divorce with our full support or to try things again with Ethan Elena, feeling empowered to reject the controlling dynamics, declared her wish to dissolve the marriage with a renewed sense of resolve. James confirmed her choice and gave her our utmost support, we prepared for Ethan's possible arrival by sharing the information we had obtained a week went by without hearing from Ethan, then, nine days later, Ethan and Ivy showed up out of the blue, I checked the intercom and told Elena and James as the doorbell rang, James proposed a direct discussion with them to resolve the issue, Elena nodded and opened the door to find Ivy and Ethan scowling at us, I calmly greeted them. 
Asking them to come inside so we could talk about things, Elena made it clear that she wanted a divorce and that she would not be going back to their shared apartment, Elena's choice was met with obnoxious threats from Ethan, who would not accept it, Elena resolutely faced Ethan, refusing to back down, Elena was chastised by Ivy for allegedly disobeying her job for six months, in response, Elena said that every time she tried to complete a task, Ivy would take over and critique her approach. Making Elena feel marginalized, Ethan interjected saying that Ivy had only assisted since Elena was unable to do the tasks herself, freeing her up to concentrate on her work. James jumped in with a furious tirade, calling their behavior abusive. He disclosed that six months earlier, Ethan had been sacked from his position because of an extramarital affair with his boss's wife. Elena accused Ethan of pressuring her to put in more work because of his lack of funds, and Ethan looked pale upon hearing the news. James then turned to face Ivy, addressing her about her addiction to shopping and the reality that her divorce, not a simple argument, had resulted in her eviction. The masks of Ethan and Ivy came off as the truth came to light. James disclosed that Ivy was being pursued by debt collectors, and Ethan was facing an alimony lawsuit. It was soon apparent that they were trying to place the brunt of their debt on Elena. Elena, trembling with rage, set down a divorce document. Announcing her final decision, she had completed half of the paperwork and was pushing Ethan to finish it and turn it into the police. They would speak through lawyers from then on. Ethan stood up for himself in front of Elena and asked for her forgiveness, blaming his behavior on a brief fit of rage. However, the harm had already been done, and Elena was unwavering in her resolve to dissolve the union. I made a mistake by keeping it from you, Elena. All I have is you. I really apologize, with regret in his voice. Ethan begged for forgiveness, Ivy, who was crying, made an appeal to Elena as well and acknowledged her shortcomings. I took care of everything and finished all the housekeeping, didn't I? I apologize. Please return later. I'll carry on with the housework. Elena's determination unwavering. She cast a chilly glance toward Ethan and Ivy, I'm tired of it, with you too, who would want to start over, you took advantage of my pay and concealed what you did, I'd rather not see your faces. Ethan and Ivy just stood there sobbing uncontrollably, with a firm hand, James broke off the talk and told them to go out, Ethan and Ivy got up reluctantly and left. Vanquish, with the help of attorneys, Elena and Ethan finalized their divorce, a claim for alimony was made against Ethan, mentioning both his affair and his inability to feed Elena enough food, Ethan was forced to move into a less expensive apartment with Ivy, and he started working extremely hard to pay the alimony, making Ivy the object of his ire and causing him to have arguments all the time. We were updated on Ethan and Ivy's present circumstances by our attorney, Elena, meanwhile, made a full recovery and went back to work, appearing to be loving her profession even more. She thanked James and me for our support and apologized for the trouble the divorce had created. I apologize for returning home and becoming a burden. I appreciate all of your assistance with the divorce. I'm going to be here for a long time, she declared. I gave her a strong hug and told her that the only thing that mattered was her well-being. James who is always a rock of strength, urged her to talk more. Honestly and to avoid going overboard, Elena took responsibility for her error and said she should have gotten assistance sooner. It made her heart smile to see Elena smile again. James proved to be a very trustworthy person when he stood by us and battled Ethan and Ivy. I couldn't help but fall in love with him once more. He quipped, then how about showing your gratitude with food, in response to my playful jabs at him, tonight. Prepare my favorite pork cutlets as a family, we'd surmounted obstacles and knew there would be more to come, but I knew that James and Elena would be there for each other no matter what, so I felt secure in our friendship, that's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar story. My afternoon was disrupted by an unknown call, hello, I hesitantly replied and got nothing in return. The silence was broken then by a well-known voice, Mom, it's Kevin. His voice was high-pitched and heavy with annoyance, see, I understand, you can't suddenly stop. Being a mother because you and dad broke up, I am no longer a child, 
I can't get drawn into your drama indefinitely. His statement struck me with a mixture of outrage and bewilderment. What topic are you discussing? Why are you phoning me? Trying to understand the situation, I inquired. But Kevin's tone became more acerbic. It's imperative that you take action. You owe money for child support and school fees. And you have to make the payment shortly. You're trying to take advantage of dad for financial gain. But it's due of your infidelity. You've crossed the line. I felt hurt by his charges and found myself reacting angrily. Who is this? I responded, attempting to disprove his assertions. I never had any children. Kevin, though, wasn't buying it. Are you serious? Or are you merely attempting to evade accountability because it makes you uncomfortable? Play no games with me. I was dead serious. But I think Kevin believed I was kidding. Kevin wasn't biologically mine, as I'd already hinted. I was married to my ex-husband for three years about 14 years ago. In spite of his frequent business travels, our connection appeared to be solid, but the subject of kids always hung between us, unsaid but nonetheless significant, I brought it up at last, three years after waiting for him to bring it up. His answer was evasive and ambiguous, he'd say, I'm busy with work right now, when would he, though, not be busy? I started to worry for our future since it felt like there was never a stop. To the putting off, isn't that suspicious, I said to my ex-husband, if you keep citing work as an excuse, it starts to raise concerns about whether you're truly working or not. I was surprised by his defensive reaction. What are you trying to say? Nothing I've done has gone wrong. A persistent sense of discomfort crept in as the conversation seemed strange, though it didn't cross my mind at the time. I had suspicions about my ex-husband being unfaithful. I was curious to find out more because of something strange about his attitude, examining his words and deeds on his numerous business travels exposed a reality that was even more disturbing than I had anticipated. Not only was he living a double life, dividing his time between our house and the home of another family, but he was also cheating, and to my surprise, there was a kid in that household named Kevin at the age of two. Kevin was unable to comprehend the intricacies of the circumstances, it was a revelation that was both lucky and unlucky, and it would undoubtedly hurt someone, I went looking for the other woman, who seemed to have heard about me from my former spouse, determined to face the truth, there was no warmth or camaraderie during our strained encounter, I expressed my worries, wondering if it was appropriate for my ex-husband to carry on leading a double life and who Kevin's real mother was, she gave a detached, matter-of-fact remark. I am Kevin's mother, she declared with assurance and without regret, her cool attitude made me feel dejected and made my determination waver. I questioned her further when we spoke, finding out what her plans were for the future. Her lack of emotion in response surprised me. I don't intend to make any changes to my life. I'm happy with the state of affairs, she declared. I continued on, confused in my thoughts. Why was my ex-husband so reluctant to have a child with me? Even though he claimed to enjoy kids, her answer revealed some of his real emotions, he claimed that. A different timing would have been preferable, she said, he didn't appear very excited about my pregnancy with Kevin, it was a crushing reality, even though he said little, his deeds shouted loudly, can he really say he likes children, I asked, feeling both frustrated and astonished at the same time, she responded in a cryptic manner, her lips slightly pursed in a smile, maybe it's not as easy as that, she thought to herself. After all, actions speak louder than words, I could feel the weight of her. Words bearing down on me as she spoke, revealing hard truths that I had been afraid to face, it seemed as though she had unearthed a secret aspect of my history that I had made an effort to conceal, I wanted to disagree with her, but ultimately I couldn't resist, her insight was profound, revealing goals and motives I had never ventured to think of, a sensation of resignation overcame me when I realized this. Maybe my ex-husband's admission that he liked kids had just been a ruse to get my approval, an inept attempt at charm, recognizing that I had been duped and that our marriage had been based on unstable ground from the beginning was a painful pill to swallow, I made a snap decision and filed for divorce in the days that followed, 
demanding compensation for the years of dishonesty and treachery, without resistance, my ex-husband took the documents, a tacit admission of his guilt. But even in the midst of the chaos of being apart, I couldn't shake the thought that he had married. Me in the first place, when I eventually got up the nerve to inquire, his response was not very encouraging, I wonder why we got married too, he said, regretting his decision, it was a somber discovery that made our error even more serious, I was resolved to move on from the past and started a new chapter in my life when the divorce was finalized, I moved and made a fresh start since it felt appropriate to change scenery. Embracing a new perspective and letting go of the ghosts of my past was a healing experience as time went on my ex-husband's sporadic attempts to get in touch with me remained unanswered and our lives continued to drift apart it appeared as though we had both moved on and were happy to put the past behind us then kevin called out of the blue reminding us of the intricate web of lies that still held us together his demand for school fees and child support came as a sobering reminder of the fallout from my ex-husband's behavior i explained heartbroken that i didn't have to support him, a sobering reminder of the harm my ex-husband's infidelity had caused as collateral. Although it was a difficult pill to swallow, it served as a reminder to me of how crucial it is to keep going forward at all costs. My irritation level increased when Kevin kept leveling charges at me, his words served as a sharp reminder of the distance between us, don't you feel ashamed as a mother, he threw at me. I couldn't help but get annoyed by the refrain that kept coming back to me, however. I swallowed my pride and waited for him to cool off since I knew that losing my temper would just make him even more irate at last. When the tension started to subside a little, I took the chance to talk, can I talk for a moment, I started, my voice steady despite my internal anguish, there are a few things I'd like to confirm, his reply was terse, his voice full of resentment, his suspicion was obvious as he screamed, how did you manage to get my number, after a moment of hesitation, I said the truth, it's readily apparent, I inherited it from my father, I answered, anticipating his response. With every claim Kevin made, it became more and more obvious to me, and I was struck with a terrible reality, fueled by lies and deceit weed by his own father. His hatred was well-founded, knowing that my ex-husband had used lies and half-truths to turn our son against me was a terrible pill to take. My insides burned with rage, a raging anger at how unfair it was all, despite the intense anger coursing through my body. A glimmer of empathy persisted. Kevin was still my kid, even if we were no longer close, and I couldn't ignore his pain having gotten married again and had my own kids, I realized I had to make the correct decision, I made the difficult decision to face the facts head on as a result, I started out by telling Kevin that everything I was going to say was true, bracing myself for his response I'll perform a DNA test or anything else you require if you want proof, can you hear what I have to say? Though. For the time being, I saw Kevin's visage soften as the words lingered. In the air, his initial mistrust giving way to tentative interest, though it was a minor triumph, it provided some optimism in the middle of the mayhem, there was an opportunity for reconciliation, a chance to heal the rift between us that had existed for years, I prayed that Kevin would have the forgiveness in his heart when I started to tell him the terrible truth about our past. He started acting agitated as I spilled more and more details about him. Kevin, if what you're saying is accurate, then why would dad want me to make this call? You said earlier that you had a part-time job, correct? How are you going to use that cash, debts, keeping things safe for me? Since high school is no longer required, I felt that I should assist my dad if he was in difficulty. Furthermore, I actually don't need a lot of money, you're such a kind child, but have you ever given it any thought? Why are you unable to cover your tuition and other costs if you have that much money? Well, you know. Sometimes I forget to pay my phone bill, he probably doesn't have enough money, in my opinion, is your father employed right now? He is employed, he visits the business and does everything I see. This gives me a horrible vibe, is it possible that Kevin's money is in the hands of my ex-husband, that thinking made me decide to look into my ex-husband again, could you give me roughly three weeks, Kevin, yes, that is okay, 
And would you kindly not tell your dad what I said to you over the phone, okay? Got it, I therefore started looking into my ex-husband's past, I waited for the results after hiring a private investigator, it would be too generous to go this far, yet everything is done for Kevin's benefit, it doesn't matter if people think I'm insane, I wouldn't go this far for someone else, would I walk away from a child who appeared to be about to pass out in front of me, no, is my response. That's not who I want to be, and more than anything, I hate my ex-husband for lying to that kid, I waited for the private investigator's probe report for three weeks, full of resentment against my ex-husband, I was taken aback when the findings were revealed, I felt a surge of rage at the same moment it turns out that my ex-husband is a temporary employee at the moment rather than a full-time employee, he was laid off recently, so he's currently on leave, it is said that he is heading to the unemployment office, he appears unmotivated, though, when he passes the time drinking and playing cards, because he wore a suit, Kevin assumed his dad was employed, but in actuality, he's merely looking for employment, and he doesn't show any signs of doing so, however, the most reprehensible thing about my ex-husband is the way he instantly apologizes to his child, seeing his father in that state, Kevin donates all of his money from his part-time work out of sympathy, but in truth, that money was only used to support my ex-husband's drinking and gambling, I can't possibly overlook that, I must first take action on Kevin's predicament, thinking about that, I gave my ex-mother-in-law a call, I was fortunate to have removed her number from my phone directory, greetings, what's wrong, Ava, it's been a long time, no seeing you, I want to chat to you about something, is this the right time, I gave my mother-in-law an update on the issue, his aunt and my ex-mother-in-law were his true opponents during our marriage. That's why I didn't go to their place too much, we hadn't communicated. Since the divorce at all, however, it appears that my mother-in-law was understanding of my desire to pursue other interests and had learned about my divorce, so she wasn't upset at all I see. I apologize for keeping quiet, I felt it would be preferable to hear it directly from him, but it turns out he was lying, upon hearing that, my mother-in-law's voice became quiet. She sobbed angrily over the phone when I gave her all the information I see, now everything becomes sense, he had an affair. Partner and had a child, I was not told about the birth, I was warned not to get in touch with you because you didn't want to see anyone soon after giving baby but he brought Kevin over, I gently left you alone because some people have mental instability after giving birth, and some even suffer from mental illness, and I felt terrible for the couple when I learned of their divorce, is that correct? I was unable to get in touch with you, but now and then, Kevin comes to visit, and that brings me joy, he's not at fault, even though he might be the child of an affair, and I want to stand by him as an ally going forward, I am relieved, as one would expect from you, I actually gave you a call to request a favor regarding Kevin, could you raise Kevin with your father, obviously, Kevin put a lot of effort into earning money from his part-time job so that he could go gaming, I believe we should have a real conversation about that, I'll let you handle that, however, I believe Kevin is terribly losing his future by attempting to help his father, thus, kindly allow him to live freely with you and his grandfather, with my mother-in-law's assurance that she would look after Kevin, his predicament was remedied, my ex-husband's turn is now, I chose to get in touch with him and have a later meeting, he had lied to me, and for that I was furious, my ex-husband looked worse than he had when I saw him at the cafe at the scheduled hour, you don't often get in touch with me, and you really do look older, in any case, how is Kevin doing, you are aware of this already, let's get right to the subject then, how come you got Kevin to give me a call, what are you hoping to achieve, I suddenly became desperate, I haven't had enough money lately, I was also fired from my prior employment after being found guilty of fraud, Kevin's mother vanished out of nowhere, and a lot of things are vanishing from my view, however, Kevin and my mother still believe that I will work, as long as I pretend to be apologetic, it's simple to fool them, I take it that Kevin is your son. Do you not feel something about that, 
he gives me money and is a decent son, he is the most filial son you will ever meet, ah, I see, however, you saying those things in front of them makes me feel relieved, don't I? Three stepped from behind me at the table and approached ours, huh, what's going on, you really are the worst, all of this was just heard, your gloomy disposition hasn't altered with age, you're done with it, it was Kevin, my aunt-in-law, and my mother-in-law, they had to see his actual nature for themselves in order to persuade everyone, my former spouse became observably agitated and struggled to find the appropriate phrases, with everyone berating him, my ex-husband kept looking at me, as if he needed assistance, however, it won't work even if you make that expression, recognize what a disgusting person you have been and accept all you have done, thus, this occurrence came to an end, since then, my mother-in-law, aunt-in-law, and father-in-law have all voiced their criticism of my ex-husband, due to my father-in-law's connections, he was compelled to work and was able to secure a position at a construction site, according to my father-in-law, he sent him away to get him back in shape, my father-in-law also gave the business instructions to take child support out of his paycheck, Kevin is currently using the money to pay for his tuition and other educational costs. Kevin has been residing with his grandmother ever since my ex-husband has been treating my mother-in-law and father-in-law well, which is why I'm so tired of him. Kevin seems like such a good child now, even so, I'm still unsure if the decisions I made this time were the right ones, but at least things have changed for the better. My deepest wish is for Kevin to be content. The infant that is born into this world is innocent. As my mother-in-law once said, above is today's story. If you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. See you next time.